Hi guys, it's Karen. Hope y'all are doing well. Um, going to do a few different things today, I think. And this here is just a demonstration of some of my ideas that I get in my head that I want to try and uh, accomplish somehow. <laughs> it's not always possible, but some of these will be uh, soldering some um, charms onto gemstones. Some will just be double gemstones. Some will be, look at that lovely fluorite, um, just some soldering. And then I had a request from a YouTube subscriber about, I actually asked for suggestions when I did the recent video on all the new rocks I got in. If anybody wanted to see a particular rock created something. And these were uh, pears. This is Shattakite. And she suggested I do make some earrings out of these. Uh, this design is a teardrop. So we're going to work on these two today for sure. And then this is just a this design idea. Say that fast 10 times. Um, so we will do that today and then maybe get into some of these other ones. So some of the um, supplies we'll need today is the rubbing alcohol. Of course, we always want to clean our stones off to get rid of any grease or debris we may have. Um, I'll be working with, this is uh, E6000, just a little dab, which I've already applied to uh, this pair here um, to uh, put these little bales, glue on bales, which you can order this is a variety pack of little ones. There's a gazillion of them, but those I got on Amazon. Um, and then I'll be working also with some UV resin. I like to secure things that are glue on, quotes, glue on, with a little bit something more than just, even though the E6000 is considered industrial and is widely used in jewelry. Um, I just like a little extra security, so I use UV resin. And what I've learned to do over a period of time, I've been working with the UV resin or just resin in general. I started with UV because it seemed easier than doing all the mixing and all that. I saw so many mishaps with spillage and knowing me, I wasn't confident enough. But once working with the UV, I realized that mm, not everybody um, has those kinds of problems. So I jumped into uh, the two-part epoxy as well, but I don't work with that as often as the UV. I usually only do the, the two-part epoxy if I'm making organite, which will be one of the projects coming up. But what I learned to do, instead of dumping or pouring some of the UV into the little cups and all that good stuff was I took an old nail polish bottle that was clear and once it was empty and uh, cleaned it out good with um, acetone and all that stuff. And then I covered it because UV cannot be exposed to uh, did I say UV resin? The UV resin cannot be exposed to sunlight, the UV rays, or it'll harden. So whatever you're gonna put it in, if you don't want it hardened, you better cover it up and keep it in darkness. So uh, I thought this was a pretty clever idea to put it, put some in a little bottle and then I can have a brush. So I'm gonna show you uh, the steps for that. And then just, these are just some ideas. This I decided on uh, which ear wires I wanted to use on the, this particular pair. But these, these I haven't decided on yet. There's you know, so many 
different ear wires you can use and these are just little charms you can use and all that good stuff so the first thing you'll want to do is and again i just i'm so cost um mindful that i don't even like dumping out of anything on um you know dumping the glue out on anything because I could waste a little bit. <laughs> so almost obsessive about it. And I did think about drilling a hole in these, but because Shattuckite is ranked at like a three, three or four on the Mohs hardness scale uh, for the gemstones, I decided against it. So I'm just, I just put a little dab on there because that's not going to be the main way that this is secured. Um, but we'll do that, set that aside to dry a little bit. Do another little dab. Put the lid back on. And you might get glue on your hands. It's not that big a deal. It's really not um, extremely toxic or anything. Like I said, it's used a lot in jewelry making. I try not to do too many glued items. And I wanted to um, solder these, but they're so small and uh, the jump ring would be super small and y'all know me by now that small is hard for me. So even this is a little tricky. I don't know if you'll, you'll know this, but okay. So those are glued. I'm just gonna set them aside to dry a little because they need to be dry for you to apply UV resin because UV does not like anything besides itself being liquid. So these I did last night and they're already dry. So now we're just gonna cover it with a coat of the UV resin just on the back, maybe just around the bail, but we'll see if that looks too obvious. I forgot to um, grab or mention, these are little mats that you can oops, get. I, I mostly get my stuff off of Amazon because of the uh, convenience of delivery and, and whatnot. So these are little silicone mats that you can get and kind of helpful because they, they have these little honeycomb things that if you need something to sit down in there, it's, it's really a benefit. And then I had one of my little bin that I, an old bin I had that the lid was cracked and coming off. So I use that just to carry this um, around, so to keep it stable. The other thing I'll mention about UV resin is that <clears throat> the majority of people use a UV light. And I, in the early days, did experiment with several different kinds. Now I'll say when Sorry about that, the neighbor's dog started uh, barking, which triggered my little dog, so <laughs> I had to deal with that. But I was talking about the UV resin and how typically it is hardened or cured, as they say, and it's with a UV lamp. And I did, just like the soldering iron, had to experiment with several, several different kinds and price points and all that. And um, it works okay, but what you'll notice is that doing it indoors, there will be fumes as it cures. It's not so much when you're working with the resin as when you're curing it. So because I live in the sunny, sunny state of Florida, I have the added advantage of sunlight. 
So I started putting my pieces out in the sunlight instead of using uh, the lamps because if I can't wait hmm, a couple of hours or a day for the rain to pass, then poor me. So I just take my pieces out in the sunlight. It cures much faster and I don't have to deal with any fumes and um, it's just works way better for me. So if possible, I would suggest that people use sunlight. Just like taking your photos, natural sunlight is the best. So you don't need a whole lot of resin. And here we go. I think I am going to go ahead and do the whole back of it just so it, there's consistency with it and it's okay to do over the metal piece and you don't want to get it on your hands so a lot of people will work with gloves but I already have you know you know so <laughs> gloves are tough for me it makes things way worse so I'm just putting a little coat on here and making sure it's all around the bale and then we're gonna put this out in the sunlight so isn't this a clever idea with the um, empty nail polish bottle because usually the tools that people use with resin is these little silicone tools and you know they're fine and you're usually doing much bigger projects but for something like this I have found it just to be perfect okay I'm gonna go put this out in the sunlight and I'll be back. And let's see, after about, oh, maybe 15 minutes or so, you can check on them, but you wanna make sure they're not tacky or sticky at all. You can see there's a gloss on it, which is fine. It's gonna be on the back. And they are not coming off unless they absolutely, totally snap the stone. But, um, so yeah, you can put them out in the sun and go about your business doing other things or, or other projects or more in preparation of this. So the other thing I forgot to mention is you'll need some jump rings. If I didn't mention that, I apologize. And we're just gonna put these together. You'll also want your favorite pliers. Now, again, I'll warn you, because these are little, you might see some of my shaking. And I'm sorry. We want to make sure the orientation is going to be correct on these. And I, in other words, that the stone is not turned backwards. Okay, come on. And again, remind you that you have to twist open and close jump rings so you don't lose the natural shape. So once you do that, it's hard to undo it. So let's see if we got them right. Okay, cool. Yeah, those are pretty. They're simple because we added the extra umph or design feature in the um, in the spiral. So those will be cute. Let's get this other one on. You guys, are, again, you have to bear with me and watch watch the process. These little things. Are definitely challenging. 
skin make sure we put it on the right way but if you don't it's easy enough to undo it just remember you gotta see if this is big enough I can grab it here you gotta take it off and on you just want to make sure that you got a good closure so that's that for this this teardrop hair simple but cute I think I got these decorative ear wires at Hobby Lobby I I think I've been in there twice in my life and it was mostly out of curiosity as I don't really care for their policies but that's okay so now we get to figure this one out so um, you know you have your variety size of jump rings a variety of different ear wires these I got at some little gem show I actually think they're gold filled because they look super super nice and they're really well made so I don't I don't typically use these on uh, products other than for myself. <laughs> so I think I might be keeping these if I use these. But let's see. This is the simple part of it. Because these just open. And I think we can just put it on this way. And that would be that if that's as simple as you want it to get. Same with this kind of ear wire. It's oriented correctly, as you can see. So it would just be a simple project there. But we did a simple one with these, even though the, the ear wire was fancy. I kind of wanted to see what this might look like. And I like these little charms. I just got these. Gold charms are tough to find in any um, designs that I would use. Like, I don't want to see just angels and sports things, sports themes, or what have you. I'm always looking for something that goes along with my intuitive nature like celestial type things so these i like because they're double-sided so because when you make earrings they the the preferred um feature or design aesthetically speaking is to have them kind of what they call be a mirror of one another so this one, you can turn it over to make sure that it's, you know, the opposite. So those would be cute. They'll definitely hang lower because we still then have to add the ear hook. A lot of people like big earrings. So that's an option. Here's a smaller version of these that, again, are... Um, so that would be really cute. Could be a little bit smaller. Then we have the moons, and of course we have to look for, if I'm going to use this, this um, bale section, I have to make sure there's something at the bottom I can feed a jump ring on, and this is an open moon, this has enough room it could go, same with these. So see, these again we could do something like that. And then the other thing that I've been doing, and I'll show you, because I tend to have sensitive ears, we'll say. I can't use super, super inexpensive uh, wire exposure to my ears. <clears throat> so I always try to get products that are made out of stainless steel. I can tolerate them for several hours and a lot of people have great um, results with using stainless steel. So again, this would be stainless steel. This is gold filled, which shouldn't cause any problems. Uh, what I do is I 
invest, and these are stainless too. I got these on Amazon. I think they came in four different sizes in the pack. But for me, I already had stainless steel. I had 14 karat gold, which these are not, but I have 14 karat gold. And then I got a good uh, copper that I think is stainless steel because I can wear these okay. But what I had decided to start doing since I usually only do my hoops is just making interchangeable pieces. And if it's for sale or whatever, you can make these by the dozen. I mean, all kinds of different uh, designs. I usually, how I end up with these is I'll put on a necklace and then realize I don't have a pair of earrings to match. And so I'll sit down and make a pair based on the pendant or the necklace I'm going to wear. And I just love them. And then I don't have all these different ear wires. And I just have ones that I know my ears will tolerate well. Sterling silver. So that was for that one. This one I made for a, um, one of my necklaces I had with pyrite and um, hematite. So that was silver. Then for the gold, here's the little moonstone that I can wear if I'm wearing. And aren't they darling? They're perfect. So I don't need a bunch of ear wires. I just have these. So typically what you have to do though, if we did it with this, because the orientation will be different, you have to add a small jump ring to the bale that we resined on and then a larger one a larger jump ring that will fit over your hoop allowing it to hang the correct way you see what i'm saying so it's just something you have to think about when you're deciding on what you want to make so if we wanted to use these we'd add a small jump ring like a four millimeter and then on top of that, we'd probably go with a six. I think this is a six. And then that would go on the other one and, and make it the correct orientation so it would hang correctly on just the hoop. I did it also for copper. I just make little components that I can interchange easily on each of my hoops. So there was that one for, what did I wear that with? Oh, that one Labradorite that, oof, it sold. I was gonna keep it longer, but <laughs> it sold already. And then this one, because it has different components on it, you can play with how you want it to hang. That's malachite. So that's just some ideas. So, okay, let me get these out of the way. And I showed you that. And we're going to decide, I think I already did this. I need, this must be an eight millimeter, the larger ones. And I think I really like these the best. So, we need our pliers, and let's see, we put this on this way, it should hang just fine, and have enough room.
Oops, sorry guys. To close. Again, I'm twisting the piece. You want to make sure there it's closed really well, like that isn't quite um, where I want it. So you just twist it back and forth till you get a good closure. And then I'm just gonna feed it on here. How cute is that? Love it! Love it, love it, love it. So we'll do that again. That was the middle size one. And this one lays this way. So we want this one to go this way. Come on now. And there we go. Very cute. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Till next time.